Hello, Dangerous Gamers. It's a momentary genius here, back with a, a new acquisition of mine, and it's the brand new Fair Furies Ramses 2 tank. And hopefully, we can get this done while the cough medicine still holds and the coffee has yet to take effect. So, this should be fun. Now, I suppose a short answer to should you get this tank? Well, if you play Cold War in any capacity, I say yes. And I'm sure you're responding to me with, are you crazy? I'm not spending 13,000 gold in any way, shape, or form on a tank. And I'm like, I still recommend this thing because just put it on your calendar for next year to get it for free. And part of their Wargaming's Monster Mash um, tank op, where you can grind through and get as many points as you can to either get free... Uh, goodies or a tank and being that this is the first monster mash cold war tank it's off to a really good start now what i really enjoy about this tank is because a i'm a fan of the russian tanks and that means i'm very comfortable with t-54s t-55s type 80s tr5 80 tr85 and they all have well the type 80 is more of a t62 um type variant but um it does play like those and that's the thing about the t55s and t54s is they have armor for, like they have good hull armor from the front good top hull plate and decent enough turret armor to where you can charge in you can be aggressive and the only drawback is to that turret is it's kind of slow to turn. And with the Ramses 2 here, or I should, excuse me, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's Fury, we'll talk about more about the Ramses 2 in a second, is it has the mobility of the Leopard tanks. In fact, I may say it might be a little bit better for going faster, but the turret is slower than the hull by a significant margin, which is why you see me boosting my engine power. So hopefully that translates into a slightly faster turning turret to keep up with the hull rotation. That is probably the one thing I want you to be aware of. Now, unlike the TR-580s and the TR-85s and all the other T-55 variants, which just end up with... 100 millimeters. This is upgraded to what the M60 American medium tanks have, and that is a 105 millimeter gun. So, yes, you can have really good penetration, like penetration that can only be matched by a 115 millimeter Russian boom snout. Yeah, I'll get more on that later. So, if you are a fan of the mobility of the leopard tanks in cold war but really wish you had kind of the punching power of the t62 m1 well or i guess other newer 105 millimeter boom sounds it's it's you have that here and I keep bring, comparing these to the Leopards because it's really a very similar place. Yes, you only have six or five degrees of gun depression because this is a Russian tank. You can get over that because you're t you have 230 millimeters of top plate hull armor. That top plate can bounce rounds. And as all 255 is kind of like, you don't quite know when it's going to bounce, but you know it can. And I blocked a lot of damage. Shout out to Osmandius here for uh, working on his breakdancing moves and the bugs for, uh, or maybe he's just being tickled by the, by the scarabs. I don't know. But yes, I went for the full package here. I opted out of, well, I did get Steven, but I opted out of the uh, Roswell XM66F tank destroyer just because... As much as it's a cool looking tank, and I really wanted some Monster Mash power to play with that in the Mash, in that game mode, it's World War II, I don't really play it, and Monster Mash, Awakened mode, whatever they kind of call it this year, only comes around once a week. Woohoo. 
might not even get a chance to really play. So I went with the tank that I will play, and I am not disappointed. So here we are on Thipple Ridge. I take up a standard position I have for, uh, I can provide sniping, I can see, I can detect. But I quickly discover, because I'm paying attention to the map, as I sometimes do and sometimes forget to do, I'm seeing where my team's going, and I realize this whole area is completely unprotected. It's just myself, and I do believe that's a T-72 AV or an M1, but it's like, there's not enough here. It's a year old, oh God. That's even, <laughs> it's even worse than my team. So I use my great speed to get out of there and relocate to a better hill position that still allows me to have a good overlook, but at the same time, I can fall back and protect myself. Now, when I mentioned that I have a slightly better tank than a T-70 Euro, but the gun is kind of just as bad, this is A, as part of the Egyptian upgrade package for their T-55s, they did upgrade to an American 105mm boom snout that wargaming console division have cursed with the Russian derp. Yes. You can either if you really do want to aim in, let that reticle, the, the, the aim in on the reticle could be a little faster, but it's all right. But yes, you can perfectly aim in, be very still. And one in three shots, whether there's that first shot or that last shot will, hopefully it's just the one shot, but sometimes it's more, will eat dirt, slightly go over the turret, or you're relatively certain it exited the barrel of your bump snout at like a 35 degree angle and became a huge threat to the far off scenery. As you can see here, uh, this is the first match, so I haven't worked on gun accuracy because I just haven't yet. And I'm trying to get a feel for a tank, but I knew what I was kind of getting into. So yes, the shot went wide. I love the versatility of this tank that it really allows you because it has some frontal armor. You can you can really adapt it to your play style. And the leopards don't. The leopards do not have a really good front armor. Now, if you don't know what I mean and you're still hesitant to buy this tank, play work your way through the Romanian mediums in Cold War, the TR-580 and the TR-85, uh, and you will kind of get what I mean. They're fast, they're mobile, and they're and that top plate and sometimes their turret can really bounce more rounds than you would expect. You can really get in there sometimes and face hug. I have face hugged FE-4211s and really humbled them with the power of this of this style of tank. But at the same time, I found that because of still concealment, it's just like the Leopards and how I have this up to be more of a stealth support or an assassin tank. I can get into a position quickly and go undetected and do a lot of detecting. I've got some surprising assisted damage of detections, and a surprising number of detections with this tank. And I love that about the Leopards, but again, the only thing like, especially the Leopard 1A5 has. It has that manlet on its gun that can really bounce rounds, but for its hull, not so much. All right, now pay attention here, because I have a TR-85, and I know I've been going on about this front turret, or the, the front of these tanks. I get a critical shot, but I don't do damage. Now watch this. Also, watch how bad the accuracy on my gun is. Boom, I think that went right under that TR-85, if not eating the dirt like the first round did. And I'm getting frustrated here, so that's why I keep pushing forward and completely overexpose my tank. So I'm moving in, I go in for another shot, and boom, it bounces. I f f the most armored part of the front of that turret, and watch, oof. It completely shrugged off that missile from a Sheridan. Surprisingly, not the kill shot. So here we are, actually this is Bradley. So here we are, I've been taking out, but again, you have speed, you have mobility, you have firepower, and you have armor. You're not an FB4 or 211, so you're not obnoxiously OP like that. And if you do, if you get stupid with this tank, your your sides are completely exposed. Your tracks need to be protected. You can't. It, oh, it just it makes me smile. It really does. 
because it gives me the one thing that the leopards just couldn't, and that's armor. And if you're still going on about gun depression, oh my god, you ridgeline queen, learn to move, learn to actually get comfortable with assessing the geography of every map. I know it's just so nice to sit behind a rock and have my lower plate protected and I've angled my front, my the top of my plate, so but, so there's better angling. It's like, oh my God, learn to move. I learn to, and I'll also learn to accept that a few small rocks may completely ruin your gun depression and just throw your shot off completely. That that you don't have to do that. Listen, I have become quite adept with the T100 Inera One, the premium Egyptian uh, tank destroyer with no gun depression. That's like, like three degrees. It's basically nothing, and I love the T611. Listen, I get it. I'm a jack of all trades and master of none, and you're the master of hull down. Congratulations. I'll do the dirty work of spotting for the tanks that you're too scared to go out and find. I'm very familiar with that practice in World War II. I hope you enjoy your mouse. It's a fine tank, I suppose, if you like going nowhere fast. <sighs> okay, Try, trying to tone this down. It's, it's, it's tank review, not a rant fest. Now, once again, to demonstrate the mobility, I have in canals. I always try to remember to go to that city. That's really a key point in this map, and you really want to take it. However, I quickly realize that my team is dispersing well away from the city, but thankfully, the opposing team has not really committed to the city either so yay again i think this is still early just after i bought the tank so eh, maybe we have some bots whatever same difference so i'm able to i should have kept moving and not stopping and trying to target a, a building but i wasn't sure again at this stage that you really need to take your time and let that boom sound aim in so but i still move i got out of there got the hit on the leopard now I'm moving here, I'm able to assess situations to see you pick out targets. I have, we have an opposing medium that is being singled out by a teammate in a, <clears throat> an AMX, one of the AMX mediums, and I'm laying into him, and I secure the kill. I know I'm pretty sure my teammate would have loved to have all the damage from that tank, but eh, we need to move on and actually win this match. So I come around the corner here and I see we have, it's a T-70 that's kind of on their own and not moving, thank God. Now I angle myself here because I'd really like to keep just a portion of the soft bits on that T-72 AV exposed while really preventing them from getting a good shot on me. And this sort of works at this position. I'm trying to go for any drive wheels, anything to kind of break tracks and at least get some assistance and also if they're behind a building, they can't aim at me because they can't move. That helps. They're moving out of the way. They're coming around. I'm a little worried now because I do have a lower plate that will be exposed if I want to be aggressive. Thankfully, I see they are turning away from me. And, yeah, I love the light tank hate. That works in my favor. Come around. And I am now on the distraction. And, yeah, out of the way. Don't take any damage and help secure. Like, okay, I didn't secure, I just helped secure the kill. Moving, I was surprised that shot hit. And we're moving in now. I, of course, to see another heavy tank that is kind of singled out on their own. It's a Leopard 2AV. Now, I may have mentioned some ramming capabilities with this tank. However, the two with these heavy tanks, especially the 2AV, it can be, it's a meaty boy. So I decided not to ram. I want to preserve my health points just so I just don't spend less silver at the end with uh, tanker bears. And this is where, depending on the angles and where the gun wants to aim, it, the turret speed was one of those things like you have to wait. And that kind of shows there with some of the shots not landing where my reticle was pointing because the gun barrel had not caught up to the reticle. So I had to be learn patience and sometimes depending on how large the target is and how fast you're moving, you might miss more than you hit or so that's one of those things about the church speed on the Pharaoh's Fury as with all T55s 
but still a fun match. I was able to move and really move. Once I realized I was not with my team, go with my team, catch up to them, and really be a benefit for them, which not all tanks can do. I feel the Leopards, have, they can reach, a, they can do 70 kilometers per hour, but sometimes I feel they can be a bit sluggish off the line. And I don't feel that so much with the Pharaoh's Fury, but then again, I don't have the, the Leopards really kitted out for speed. I'm going for more for stealth, so I'm working on reducing concealability and aiming. Because with the little armor, I don't really want to be detected because a detected tank is a target tank. And I know what you say, but true vision, everyone can see you. Trust me, when that little icon pops up over your head once you've been detected, you are far more visible when you're on a map and suddenly just appearing on a screen. And here... Okay, oof, hills. Yay, on fjords. This is... This match will demonstrate what I mean by it, this tank can give you the sense of power that I've only really felt with T-72M1 and the T-72AV. And that is that feeling of it took five of you to take me down. You guys are just... Your team, you are all so pathetic. It took five of you to take down this awesome tank. Also, there's a fun moment later on. So, here we are. I kind of got a little bit ahead of myself. And that's something that you can either be leading the charge, you can stay with the charge, or... I wouldn't say this tank can get you in the trouble. And if it does, you can kind of get yourself out of it. But this is a great tank for when there's a fluid match and there's a very mobile match but at the same time if you want to if you want to kind of act as a bird dog for like some fe4211s or the conqueror you can sort of do that or it like you can really act like that for the the heavies you can detect but at the same time you can get around enemies and act as you know, use be using a pincer maneuver and cause chaos and distractions that with a light tank you would be your armor would mean you're exposed but at the same time your speed and smaller silhouette would mean you're harder to hit but uh, that's what i mean by this is a very versatile support tank or you could stay back once you get the accuracy of the gun to where you hopefully want it if rng allows it you can be a very solid sniper just like the leopards it is a this tank will fit any playstyle you have, and I wish equipment. I'm waiting for equipment sales because, unlike all my other 105s that have Hesh, I do not have the Intramatic Reload on this one because I wanted to get the reload down. I don't want to play more with the tank armor and the speed, so I'm waiting on sales to try to keep experimenting with this tank because some tanks are, you can kind of figure out they're just a one-trick pony, and you really need to lean into that or else the tank will not perform fully for you. And that can be frustrating sometimes. I guess my cat here, Walrus, thinks that I'm wrong about the Ferris Fury and that the Leopards are all you need for this game. I beg to differ. Now, we're... we're we're in the city here on Fjords and, or the town, it's not really the city. But I think the match is starting to turn in our favor. It, I don't know, it's, it's definitely somewhat devolving into a brawl and our team is not, it's starting to move into a business and realizing where some of the enemy team is. There's seven tanks yet, we've only got three detected, so that's a bit odd and will be a little bit far more worrying later. This Ignis Pregascio is proving to be uh, <laughs> just as tough as me, as it seems, because those French tanks really know how to bounce. Mm, excuse me, I need a cup of coffee. <sighs> Folgers. It's what's for breakfast. And now I'm pulling back to try to kind of flank the team. The opposing team here, because we're definitely getting a pincer maneuver here, and... I need to get, I need to get around. There's an FE4211 in there that needs to be addressed. And 
we're all descending and I kind of feel like we're losing, then the match is going to be an end. I'd really want to get as much damage in as I can. And of course, there's plenty of cover with all these buildings. I get that shot into the Magach. Now, my main concern is I know there is that Ignis Brigachio around. I really want to get anything that can shoot a missile out of the way as well. I kind of realize it's probably on low health too. So, I'm hunting. It's still kind of being sneaky, not detected. There you are. I put a shot in. Ah, just not enough. Back off, reload. Sadly, I'm also helping him reload because boom. Wait, what was that? Oh, check this out. Incoming missile. And here's the reminder that this is a video game. The missile goes right through. It does damage, but also goes right through him. I think I love those moments in this game. It's like, oh yeah, that's that's fun. Maybe someday they'll uh, work on those graphics a little bit more, but hey, it does the job. I got hurt. And uh, <laughs> we went shot for shot and I came out on top. Just the way any tanker in this game prefers it. Sadly though, uh, I thought we were doing well. It turns out our team was not doing so well. We're now at three to four. And worry, annoyingly, we got a Conqueror right there, but we also have a pretty full health RDFLT. That is a tank that I can, that I have on par with the Sheridan. That six shot auto loader can really rip apart a tank. And because of that speed and that small tank, it can prove difficult to hit. And at this latest stage in the game, it's going to do a wonderful job of eating our health points, keeping us detected, keeping us distracted and keeping us in place, allowing their team, as you will see, to catch up. So I'm trying to get into a good position, get out of the way. And unfortunately, the biggest nuisance in Era 2 has arrived, the Armadillo, and it is doing a good job of, with its HE, just slapping my health. Now I see that this is over. I go for the RDFLT just to get the kill, and I know it's over. But please note how much damage I've blocked. 3,735, almost as much damage as I cost. That's pretty impressive for a medium tank. And why I really am coming to like the Ferris route, because it, it's just a little bit better than the Romanian TR-85, although for some reason I feel like the TR-580 really bounces more than its upgraded form. I don't know. Weird game thing. So that was an unfortunate match, but you kind of see what I mean by it. it took like it took the remainder of their team, like three or four tanks to take out me. That's ego thing, but you know, it's one of the things like, yeah, that made me feel good. And now, for a, uh, just a little giggle, here we have Hell's High because they've brought in the Monster Mash maps into rotation, and we're going to have a little fun. But I want to talk about something. Does anyone else feel like the 105 millimeter boom snouts in Air 2, their penetration is too high? Like, this has... 426 millimeters penetration. That's one millimeter less than the T62 M1 and the T62 top tier boom style at 427. It's almost like, what's the difference? Well, you can say alpha and make a big argument about alpha. Yes, the alpha of the 115s is in the 500s. The 105s is sitting in the higher 400s, give or take, but I really feel that there is obvious that the power creep is becoming more and more noticeable the 105s are just feeling like more accurate 115s and they could do with maybe a little bit of a nerf i don't want to see buffing too much i feel like at the highest for a nerf i feel like just bringing them down to like 410 or just you know 412 millimeters of penetration kind of would the spitting distance of the 115s but not I mean, it's still very usable especially if they're fully if it's a fully upgraded tank i just i feel that we're when you start looking at the paper you know you start looking at the stats it's like all right we're getting 
the values are getting a little skewed here. And I, it, I think after what, almost five years, Cold War mode, along with probably even World War II, we're, I think we're getting to a point where the whole game's gonna need, a lot of tanks are gonna meet, need buffs or nerfs. And as I said, when it comes to penetration, I feel like to really help with make these tanks feel tougher and stretch out the matches, I, I think the biggest thing is like, yeah, just, just knock off a little bit of penetration, not a lot. Nothing crazy, you can still keep that armor, but uh, what do you think? Is the penetration, the power creep, the uh, OP premiums kind of? I mean, that's all we got. We haven't had a new tank line in so long. And I really hope for Christmas one of the modes gets a tank line. Like, Jesus, this is, this is a long stretch. Yeah, we've got the French tanks, and unfortunately, we have the Feral Fury, but... Is it me or did anyone wish that because of the French tanks come to Cold War we got like a, a tank based off the Beast of Gévaudan or for my American brethren, the Beast of Gévaudan. I mean, something that I just you ram and then you have claws that tear into that tank or something, but you can't move afterwards. It's just like, I don't know. That was just, you know, my thought there. But back to penetration and power creep. I, I really wish I felt there was more of a differentiation between the 105s and the 115s. Besides, oh, well, it's on a Russian tank, so that means it'll have turret armor and some hull armor in the front, but you have gas tanks that'll catch on fire if you look at them wrong. Meanwhile, the, the 105 tanks, they'll have more speed and have less armor. Let's focus more on the boom snouts, you know? <sighs> On the upside, I really thought these, because of how open Hell's Highway and uh, the Prokhorovka version of the Monster Mesh map would be, the true vision would ruin the mess. But there's enough shadows and darkness to kind of keep them mm, playable in Cold War, but still wouldn't the, the the regular versions definitely should stay out so what are your thoughts on the Pharaoh's fury are you gonna get it i mean if you play cold war you have two options and i strongly support that you get this thing it is you can make this into a very good friend of yours with little effort this is quickly becoming one of my favorite tanks because again you have speed, you have a hard hitting gun, and you've got some armor so you can brawl. You know, it really works with your play style. But it's not OP, which is a good thing. You know, we've had a few too many OP tanks recent, premiums come into the game, so. I know, is this either that or we need to bounce this out with an OP tech tree tank line, which would probably not be a good idea but I don't know but the year's coming to an end and uh, after what we've seen for premium tanks I've, I'm glad to see we have a more balanced inclusion to Cold War and it's nice and oh I really think you should get this tank if you play Cold War you should and it's so easy to say that because you can get it for free if you have the time. If you don't have the time, well, again, check out the Romanian medium tanks. Uh, check out the Israeli medium tanks. You, they are very similar, and you will also enjoy them. Hey, the Chinese medium tanks very good that whole tank line's pretty dang good so you have options and that's a great thing to have so i hope you keep your tracks on the ground and the rng's in your favor let me know what you think of the ferris fury what you th think of power creep and i'll see you in the next one thank you and goodbye